Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, are you having difficulty finding things to talk about with your girlfriend or a woman that you just met? Something to think about. I got an email here from a viewer who's actually in that particular situation. And if you've been following my work for a while, or you've read my book, you know what I'm all about. I'm all about, like me personally, I'm like a love at first sight kind of guy. I've always been that way since I was a kid. And my problem was when I when I got into my teenage years and I went through my 20s, I just had absolutely no fucking clue how to interact with women. And whenever I met a girl, I just fucking, she knocked my fucking socks off. Nine times out of ten, if I got one or two dates with her, I was lucky. And then after that, I could never understand where we had this amazing connection we first met. Now, all of a sudden, she's not returning my phone calls. And there were a lot of things, like I can talk about in my book, that I was doing that was communicating, that was needy, that I was unsure of myself, that I lacked confidence, at least when it came to women. I was very successful in my career, but just when it came to my social life, I just had no idea to, how to interact with women in a confident, healthy, mature, masculine way. And so I was, I was basically talking really awesome women out of dating and sleeping with me just because I didn't have any clue what the fuck I was doing. And as I got older and I got better and I got experience, those women that I would normally have blown it with when I was younger, I started being able to have really fantastic, outstanding relationships. And it's a night and day difference between, I mean, because there's lots, I mean, there's fucking, I mean, I live in South Florida. There's fucking, I just came from the mall. I had a problem with, with my computer. I need to get looked back at the Apple store. Fucking gorgeous girls all over the store. Talking, flirt with them, shooting the shit while I'm waiting. But it's just not a real strong connection. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be 43 in a month. If I was 20 years old, I would have probably walked out over there with three or four numbers of those girls and gone out on dates. But then that's what I want to talk about in this this video coaching newsletter because it's so important. You got to choose a woman that excites you, the kind of girl that, like, when you meet her and then you walk away from her and and you maybe you set a date or you just met her, you got her number. I mean, or you went out on a date and you had a great date. It's t I'm talking about a woman that knocks your socks off is the kind of girl that when you walk away from her. You can't stop thinking about her. When you had a date the night before, it's just like you can't wait to call her again. You can't wait to see her again. And when you got the next date set up, you're thinking about her constantly. No matter how hard you try, when you're at work, you just can't. Your your thoughts just keep going back to this this woman that you've met, and it's just because she has that effect on you. It's something more than just a physical connection. There's a mental connection, there's an emotional connection, and there's a spiritual connection. It's the kind of thing that you're just your heart, everything internally lights up inside of you. And when you go out on dates with women like that, you can't help but be fascinated by them and totally into them and want to know everything about them. But if you're going out on a date with a girl and you're having sex, but you're not really deeply having a great connection with her other than just a physical connection, sex is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But it, making love to a woman who knocks your fucking socks off, who you're in love with, and who feels the same way, it's a night and day difference. And if you've yet to experience making love to a woman in your life versus just having great sex, it's like me trying to describe what a rose looks and smells like when you've never seen a rose or even smelled a rose in your life. It's just it's impossible for me to describe what it looks like and what it feels like until you're actually in it yourself. And so what I see a lot of people doing is a lot of people settle. They when they meet a person, they start going on, they're like, wow, I have this great connection, and we have really great sex. The conversation just kind of sucks, or I'm just not really that interested in listening to her. And the guy's thinking, but she's so hot, and I really like this girl, but the conversation sucks when we're together, because basically you have nothing in common. A lot of people in our society do that, because they think, oh, this is the best i got so far. What if I break up with her, and I don't find anybody as good? And then they, so what happens is they end up staying in their relationship, Maybe they get married. Maybe they have kids. And, I mean, I did the same thing when I was in, in my mid-20s. I, I married my, basically, my first long-term girlfriend that I had because I thought, you know what? It was the best that I had ever had, and all the other girls that I had liked, that really liked up until that point, had always blown me off. And so I thought, I just basically talked myself into marrying her and talked myself into thinking that it was more there was more to the relationship than there than there really was even though deep down i was always looking around going, wow that girl's really hot why don't i feel that way about my wife and there's so many i'd say the majority of people in our society unfortunately are in relationships like that and they just think that that's the norm 
And so I've got an email here from a viewer who's kind of in this situation. He says, hey, coach, I'm fairly new to the dating scene and I'm having a few issues in my relationship and I would really like your advice. My girlfriend and I have been dating for about five months now and this is the first relationship for both of us. We are both in our 20s and still in college. I don't know if this is normal, but we have a lot of difficulty finding things to talk about. And I'd say, well, for the average person, that's pretty much what their relationship is like. I mean, you can go, go to any restaurant right now, sit down at dinner, and just look around the restaurant and watch the couples. You'll see couples sitting there, barely talking to each other, just kind of staring into space. I mean, sometimes you go in a restaurant, you see a, a couple, they've obviously been together for a long time. The guy's reading the paper, the woman's reading a magazine, and it's like they're not even speaking to each other the whole dinner. It's like the only speaking they do is to the server, and out of that, it's like they barely even look at each other or interact with one another. Why? Because they're pretty much fucking bored with each other. They're not crazy about one another, and that's what I want you to have. I want you to have a woman that knocks your fucking socks off. Because if you're with a woman that knocks your fucking socks off, you're not going to have a hard time making conversation with her. If you've done a good job of being patient and getting yourself a really good girl, then it's like you'll never get bored with her. She could be talking about a dirty pair of sneakers and you'd be fascinated by her. Or she could be talking about what's going on at work with her girlfriends. And you just love listening to her. You just love the tone of her voice. You love just listening to her and how her mind works. He says, at the beginning of the relationship, we talked for a few hours at a time, but now we never really have anything to talk about. We mainly communicate via text, so we would have time to think of things to say. Yes, it's that bad. And I'd say, more than likely to do, it's probably time for you to move on in this relationship and find somebody that really knocks your socks off. And see, the thing is, is you're new, you haven't dated a lot of women yet, and probably haven't dated a lot of the kind of women that you really want, but that, that's what I say, is repetition's mother skill. I say that all the time. That's why you gotta go out with enough different women, because you'll realize, if you, like say, you go out with 30 different women over the course of several months, what you'll notice is some of those women, I mean, just let's just assume that you are attracted to all of them. Now, out of those 30, some of them you're going to be more into than they're into you. Some of them it's going to be about average. And some of them, she's going to be more into you than you're into her because once you start listening to her talk and she tells you about her life, you're just being going, it's like your eyes are going to be glazing over and they're, you're just going to find them boring. But it's like when you're young, like you're thinking, oh, but she's so fucking hot and she's so great in bed. But other than that, there's not a lot going on. And it's like the same situation that you have here. So she don't have anything in common with this girl. And because you haven't been around the block enough times, like if I go out and, and I'm having this kind of a relationship with a girl, it's like she's not going to get a second date or a third or a fourth, even if I end up hooking up with the girl. It's just you know when you know. And probably more than likely deep down, because this is probably one of the first girls that you've ever really dated long term, it doesn't mean you got to stay with her the rest of your life. And I saw so many of my friends do that when we were in our 20s. I did the same fucking thing. It's just unbelievable. And not only that, they didn't learn a lesson the first time around. Some of them, it took two, three marriages before they finally realized that, you know, maybe I'm making a bad choice before I get into it. But it's like people are just like, they get out of one marriage and they're just like racing to get into the next one, no matter how painful or how expensive the last divorce was. He says, when we go out, it's not as bad, but we still run out of things to talk about. And sometimes we have moments of silence. She isn't really talkative like your average girl, and I usually carry the conversations. I've also noticed that she isn't excited to talk to me or see me like she usually is on our last date. She wasn't really interested in messing around like we usually do or kissing me goodbye. I don't know if I sound like a female or well, but it was kind of her idea to go on the last date and she even paid. Well, that was nice of her. He says, what should I do? Should I back off for a while? Should I leave her alone and try to invent myself? How do I fix the conversation problem? I really want to stay with her and make it work. It's like, that's the thing. You, you can't make chemistry happen. It's either there or it's not. You either have it or you don't. And it's just, you know, sometimes, like I said, you stay in a relationship, you just keep trying to make something work with a girl. You just, you ain't, obviously you ain't feeling it for her and it's obvious that she ain't feeling it for you because you're describing the same thing. But you like hanging out, you like having somebody there in your life, but at the end of the day, on a scale of one to 10, this particular relationship is probably like a five. And I'm not here to help you get a five. I mean, 
you can kind of stumble into, I mean, obviously you met this girl probably before you found out about my work and you really deserve someone better than that. You deserve a woman who you feel is a 10 in your eyes and who she feels that you're a 10 in her eyes. And if you both had that kind of chemistry from the get go, it would only get better with time. Just let I me mean, think about it this way. How often do you meet a new best friend? Think about it. How often do you meet a new best bud that you can go out and have some beers with, pick up chicks, whatever, and just have a great time because you have similar interests, you like to do the same kinds of things, maybe get the same kinds of hobbies? I mean, think about it. It doesn't happen every day. And it really is worthwhile for it to be for you to, to be patient and to date as opposed to get, getting caught up in relationships with girls like this. See, if you'd been dating like three or four different girls, then women like this, you would just naturally kind of stop going out with them. But this was pretty much because it was one of your first relationships, she was pretty much the only game, the any, only thing they had going on. And it's like you just you can't make a woman become what you really want. She either is or she isn't, and that's the whole reason why you go out on dates with women, is so you can find out if there's a connection there or not. And if it's not, don't keep going out with the same girl if it's really not there. And so, my advice to you is just kind of back off a little bit, stop seeing her as much as you're seeing her. Maybe go back to just seeing her once a week because it's obvious she's not really that enthusiastic to be with you and you've got to be objective about it you got to be reasonable and just say it's just simply not there so I mean I have a gold mine of information out there that can really help you get a great girl but you're not going to get a really great girl and knock your socks off who you just love hanging out with and no matter what you're doing or where you're at you have a great time as long as you continue dating women like this but just just look at it this way. It was a great learning experience, and it's time to move on to the next one. That's what I would do if I were you. So if you have a question you want to ask me, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which will be on the left-hand side of your screen. Send me one, two paragraphs max, and just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook on my website, underneath the email sign-up box, there's a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page. And if you don't have a Kindle device, just download one of their free e-reader apps once you get there. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, you can show your appreciation by going to my website right now. And on the Wibia toolbar at the bottom of your screen, click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.